Oh my god, I forgot to mention, I got a haircut. <laughs> Which was honestly like a month and a half ago now, but... That's me! With my new do! And then Jube got her new haircut too. I don't know if you can see, but she's got little palms on her feet now. So much fun. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel by Emwu. I'm Emwu, aka Marianne, and today we have episode 13 of the knitting podcast that we host here. We talk about everything a crafty, primarily knitting, and in today's episode, I'm just gonna go through a traditional knitting podcast where I'm talking about things that I've completed, work in progresses, and some future plans, maybe. Less so on that one this time, I think. I don't have, oh, we got a head popping in. Thank you. We, um, I don't have too many plans at the very moment. I have quite a few work in progresses, so we'll see what we'll get there. And at the very end, I'll throw in the stash update that I've been doing in these podcasts. Um, firstly, I would like to say sorry for uploading a week late. I usually upload every other week, but last week I got knocked out with a cold. Overall, I'm feeling a lot better, but I still have a little bit of like a residual cough. So we're going to try to work around that slash edit through that. Apologize in advance if I just lose my voice here or there because it just like comes and goes. <coughs> Exhibit A. Hoping we can get through this and we have quite a few things to catch up on so let's just get into it. First thing as always what I'm wearing today I'm actually doing a knit on knit combo today. I have my my favorite things knitwear chemical number no. nine in the color oatmeal from knitting for olive cotton merino and then on top of that I'm wearing my Robinson wrap top by Florence Miller and this is done in Katina Cita Merino in the color, I want to say 71 or something. It's this really beautiful like sage green with a little bit of white marling. The makeup of this one is a silk merino blend. And so it has this really pretty green and white marled texture. Great fiber for the spring and summertime if you're looking for something. It's warm with the merino, but it's got a really nice drape to it because of the silk. Would highly recommend both of these patterns. I will comment though that the My Favorite Things Knitwear Camisole Number no. 9 has a size limitation, like it's not very size inclusive. I knit this last year before I was trying to prioritize highlighting or knitting up more size inclusive patterns, so just wanted to put that out there if that's what you're interested in. I have two updates to give to you guys before jumping into the like meat and bones of the podcast. One of which is an update on some mittens that I made. I think these showed up in the last podcast episode. I don't remember. Maybe the one before that. And these are the Nova Felted Mittens by Isa Webb. These are the second pair that I've made and they're kind of wonky and I'll explain that in a second. But I just wanted to give an update and to say that they have officially been felted. They're still quite large. Um, I think the yarn combo and the needle size that I used resulted in them always going to stay a little too big. Dupe is sniffing my mitt now. I don't know if you can't see her, but she is down there. Um, so they have officially been felted. These, if you guys are interested, are knit in Knit Picks Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Held Double in the color Mink Heather. And I ran out at the very end, so I had to do Fisherman Wool in the color Nature's Brown, I think, for the thumbs, just to finish them off. But I threw these in the wash twice, and they both were in the dryer to try to get them to shrink a little bit more, hence why they're kind of like all wrinkly. I might block them another time to hopefully flatten them out, but they are doing the perfect job in terms of what I wanted them for. I knit these so they could be dog walking mittens, which I knit a pair for my husband a while back and I really, I stole them all the time. So I made myself a pair and as much as they're kind of wonky and wrinkly from the dryer, they do a perfect job. So there's a little update on that. Would recommend the pattern. It is a free pattern, but I probably would do a gauge swatch. I just did the same sizing that I did last time and they didn't shrink smaller either. So I probably should have sized down if I actually wanted like properly fitting mittens, but I'm okay with the oven mitt style for dog walking. It's easy to slip your hand in and out in terms of like for treating or like if you need like the dexterity of your fingers, um, but they're really warm and yeah, 
the mittens. The other thing I wanted to give an update on was something that I don't think I alluded to in the past, and that was something with my step-by-step -step sweater by Florence Miller. So for some context, this is a free like raglan shaped pullover sweater that Florence Miller released a while back and it's supposed to be like a really beginner friendly pattern. I saw a version of it that looks pretty much similar to this made by Katie Does Knits which is this beautiful like uh, alternating brown colored oatmeal sweater and I fell in love with it and she made it with the fisherman's wool which is what I did. Love this sweater. It is a little itchy if you guys are interested in making something with the fisherman wool. It is like more of a rustic yarn so just keep that in mind. But at the time that I had done this I started it with a folded like a double edged not double edged like a double folded collar and I made two mistakes when doing that. I one started it too small in the sense that when I had like stitched the fold down I did it too tight which was causing like a little bit of like tightness around my neck and then two I stitched it down on a slant so if you go back and you watch videos where I'm wearing this or there's photos you can see that like the striping of the one by one ribbing was like slightly slanted off to the side and while it didn't really bother me it was bothering me <laughs> And so I decided to rip it off and do a different collar. This is just like a plain one by one rib collar with, uh, I did do an Italian bind off for this one. I've been kind of leaning away for that, but I think cause I did Italian bind off for everything else. So I wanted it to be kind of cohesive and that is just a little update on it. It was a very interesting experience because I knit this sweater top down as per the recommendation of the pattern. And in doing so, when I frogged it back, well, I actually cut the collar off and like had to re-pick up stitches. I don't know if I did a perfect job. There's like a couple holes here and there. There's still like some loose thread, but overall I think it fits a lot better and it's not as tight and so it's less itchy and I'm really happy with it. So just some sweater surgery on this one that I did that I wanted to update you guys on. If you guys are nervous in doing something like that, definitely put in lifelines. I made the mistake and forgot to and so there was like a time where I was like kind of unraveling where I was like oh no but the good thing I guess is that because I was unraveling it in opposite direction it's not as like free frogging as normal and so it wasn't like all of a sudden my like yarn was everywhere thankfully. Just as a reminder to you guys if something isn't to your liking you can change it especially if it's handmade because that's the beauty of making your own garments. Oh quickly before I put this away. Um, this is the Fisherman Wool that I was talking about from Lion's Brand in the color Oatmeal, the Nature's Brown, and then Normal, or just like Brown, I think this one, the dark one's called. And this was the same color, sorry, this one was the same color that I used for the mitts that I just showed you. So that's all I have for you guys in terms of just like quick updates that I've been doing in the background. Let's move into finished objects now. I have two. I thought I would have more. But I think I actually didn't do any knitting basically when I was sick. I was so, like, in my mind, I thought it was going to be the best time to do knitting because I was, like, kind of low energy, just sitting in bed kind of thing. But I was so low energy that all I wanted to do was sleep. So I feel very behind on my knitting because I didn't get a lot of knitting done last week. But regardless, I have two finished objects. The first one here, if you guys saw my most recent video, which is what's in my knitting basket where I walk you through all of, like, my like most used notions, my knitting needles, stuff like that. You would have seen this, but this is my Universal Vest by Hunter May, AKA May Crochet. So first and foremost, you might have noticed they changed the name. I didn't change the name. I've just been saying it wrong this whole time. I've been saying that it's the ultimate vest, which is not true. It is the Universal Vest. My apologies if that's a little confusing, but this is a made to measure pattern by May Crochet and I had the opportunity to test knit for her and I finished this within a couple weeks ago and I love it. I love it a lot more. When I first casted it off, I was a little kind of like unsure about what I had finished. Not anything because of the pattern, but just because I think the fabric wasn't as like drapey and the finished product wasn't exactly what I was like envisioning in my head. Now that I've had it off the needles a little longer, I 
absolutely adore it. It's such a great like piece to just like throw over a long sleeve. It's still cold enough that you want to wear like a layer to keep yourself warm, but it's not cold enough that you want to pull on like a really thick wool sweater, if that makes sense. So I've been getting a lot of wear of it. It's a beautiful pattern. It is, like I said, made to measure in the sense that she gives you a PDF you plug in all your like measurements and your swatch details and it spits out a pattern that you can then use. So it's totally customizable to like whatever body shape or size or what kind of ease you want. And it's actually relatively straightforward to follow through. I specifically wanted to make a vest in my mind for a couple months now since I finished my seal slipover, which if you guys don't know the story, I did the petite knit seal slipover back in like October maybe. Immediately after casting it off, my dad asked to borrow it because he was like cold one day and didn't have a sweater. So I loaned it to him because it's fairly oversized. And then he really liked it and wanted to keep it, but my mom ended up taking it. And so now my mom has it. Um, she ended up making my dad a version. Anyways, my point is, is I really wanted to invest after that one was kind of taken but also given away. But I wasn't entirely sure like what I wanted to do. I kind of wanted a V-neck instead of the like scoop that the seal slipover has. And a while back, I did a swatch with the Fisherman Wool Oatmeal held with a Make It Tweed like lace yarn that has like Tweedy Flex on it, as well as some um, silk mohair from Sandus Garn that I had left over from a different project. And I really like the way that the fabric looked and it, it's this combo that I did. And I think it looks so fun with the Tweety and then the fuzziness from the mohair makes it like really warm and soft. And then the Fisherman Wool has like a lot of integrity to it. So it's like a really interesting yarn combo, but it's like on the heavier side because I think Fisherman Wool's already like air and weight and then adding two more strands of yarn to that. I was having a hard time finding a vest pattern that was like matching my vision that was like going to be able to accommodate that yarn weight. So when Hunter put out this pattern call, tester call, I was like, that's probably the perfect opportunity for me to try kind of creating a vest to the vision in my mind. So that's why I applied and I thankfully got it and this is the result of it. This is just a bottom up, simple plain stockinette version with two by two ribbing. In retrospect, if I was to go back, I would make the V-neck a little deeper. It ends like pretty high up and I probably would make it a little bit more oversized given how heavy the yarn weight is. But again, overall, I'm really happy with it. I don't know how I feel about bottom up. I know I said I wanted to try more different types of construction this year as part of my like 2024 goals and I did hit that with doing this and it was a good learning opportunity because I had to do a provisional cast on. Is that what they're called? Um, not a provisional cast on. It is a provisional cast on. The ones where you have to like cast on so that you could pick it up later. Is that the right term for it? Um, so I did that for the bottom and knit it bottom up. And I did mess up originally, the V-neck was even like higher up and I had the opportunity to frog it back and make it a little bit lower because it was knit bottom up. But overall, I had a hard time like envisioning how this garment was actually gonna look on because it was bottom up. So we'll see if I kind of stick to it more. You'll see down the line that I have actually another project, like work in progress right now that is knit bottom up. But overall, really enjoyed it, had a great time. The pattern should be coming out soon if you guys are interested. And um, Hunter has a whole bunch of different like ultimate patterns, not ultimate, sorry, I keep doing it. She has a whole bunch of different universal patterns in different styles. So she has like a cardigan version, a pullover version. This one is the vest version. And they're all kind of the same idea where they're made to measure kind of customizable. They're really, really fun. The last thing that I would say about this is I don't know if I would recommend this to be the very first pattern for a beginner knitter. While the actual knitting wasn't too bad and the pattern was really easy to follow because it's a little bit more open-ended to be that more versatile, I think it would be really helpful for a knitter to have or a crochet work because you can actually do this for crochet knitting or Tunisian crochet to have a little bit of experience of making garments before diving straight into this one just because there are certain components where she says like decrease one stitch or like increase one stitch or something like that. And she doesn't provide any guidance because it's 
up to the designer or the maker's like interpretation in terms of how they want that decrease to look, what kind of like style they're going for. And so there's a little bit more, I guess, like creative freedom in it that might be a little daunting to a very, very, very new beginner. But honestly, I think if you had like one or two garments under your belt, you could probably be able to figure it out. Overall, I'm really happy with it. It's a really like nice and like hearty vest that I think I'm gonna get a lot of wear out in the fall time as well. Okay, the next project that I have for you guys that is a finished object is one that was fairly recently casted off actually. And I haven't given it much love because I cast it off right before I got sick and I haven't had a chance to fully block it or take photos of it yet. But that is the Ansonite Tea Test Knit by Audrey Barrigo. So, I feel like this has been growing for ages and it's so strange to finally have it done. It is this beautiful, all over like tweed styled t-shirt pullover st structure with a really big scoop neck, drop shoulders, and like an oversized boxy tee vibe. I really enjoyed it. I had a, such a great time knitting it. This is also a test knit. You'll notice that a lot of the stuff that I'm working on right now are test knits. That's just how it happened to be. I applied for a whole bunch a while back and every time I see one that like really catches my eye, I'll put my name in just to see what happens. And I've been very fortunate the last couple times. And so I'm just kind of riding that wave. And it has the most gorgeous detailing on it. So if you can see here in the ribbing, it's got a twisted rib and she has this like rolled collar detail on the edges here. You don't have to do it. You could do just like a straight one, but I really liked how clean it looks actually surprising it has a hint of detail so this is knit in knitting for olive merino in the color marzipan held with claret and it's a beautiful like tweed pattern it's a 26 row repeat and despite it looking very intricate it is quite like easy going of a pattern and i really liked it. It's not usually like a shape or structure that I'd go. I fell in love with the pattern when she first posted it and overall really enjoy it. I actually think it would look really nice with a long sleeve, but in the interest of like the spring summer months, I thought like a shorter sleeve would be a little bit more fun. The recommended yarn for this is actually knitting for all of cotton merino, but I think it did really well with the merino. And funnily enough, I originally was trying to use a lot of stash yarn for this, but I was just shy, so I had to go get another one. And they, I don't know if the camera will catch it up, but there is a slight difference. You can see that the marzipan that I used for the body is like slightly darker than the stuff that I used for the collar, and that's because they're two different dye lots. I'm not too worried about it. I did have an opportunity to do the whole body in like one dye lot, and then the sleeves and the collar detailing are all in a different one. So there's like a little bit of contrast, but I think when you wear them, you wouldn't really know. It's just like when you know, you know, you know? <laughs> um, so this one was a really straightforward knit. It was pretty slow moving because it was fingering weight, but all things considering, because of the repeats and the different color like changes, it's quite fun and quite engaging, but nothing's too complex. I learned a new cast on for this. I learned the German twisted cast on, which I really like. It's very similar to the long tail cast on with a little twist, and I think it gives it a nice like stretchiness. So I definitely have used it a lot more in other projects after learning it for this one. And I basically made it pattern. This is size two I tested for her. It is a very oversized in terms of like the style and the design. This pattern comes in 10 different sizes and they range from 85 centimeters to 175 centimeters bust with a recommended ease of 10 to 15 centimeters. I only made one modification on the, not request, but like I did ask Audrey if it was okay. And that was in the sleeves here, you have a little bit of short row shaping to kind of help with the like drop shoulder design. And the pattern recommends you do it in stockinette for simplicity. And I felt confident enough to do it in pattern. So it's not too hard because the first section of the repeat is in stockinette. And so there was just like a little bit of like yarn management to get that worked out because you do have to switch to the like red color partway through. You can see that that's not a total full row around. 
Um, but I think that amount of detail like makes it a little bit more like clean given that otherwise you have a really big like white stripe here with the like stock in it and then starting the pattern. This pattern grows quite a bit because of like the yarn management. You can see that this sleeve I haven't actually blocked yet. There's a little bit of like wrinkling going on in contrast to this sleeve. And it relaxed really beautifully. I steam block it. I'm hoping to steam block it after this. Sometimes I feel bad when I don't have a lot to say about a pattern, but also like sometimes when there's not a lot to say, it's just because the pattern went really smoothly. So definitely recommend Audrey Burigo and her patterns and her style. She is fun. And she also, all, all her stuff comes in French and English. So really nice. And you'll see me wearing this quite a bit this spring and summer. I have a couple new cast-ons, but before I go into that, I just want to give a little bit of an update on an old work in progress. This is my Eva cardigan for my husband, Ryan. At this rate, if you guys have been following along, you'll know the drill by now. I'm going to ask him to jump to X time here because it's kind of a surprise cardigan for him. He knows that I'm making him something. He's tried it on like blind a couple times, but he doesn't know exactly what it looks like and we're trying to keep the mystery in place. But this was kind of like a slow moving project that I've been working on for the last, I want to say like four or five months now. And it's because it's not a test knit, it's not any time of timeline. And it is a lot of purling for the body section because it's knit flat. Oh, my yarn is tangled. That's fun. I'll be right back. Okay. So yeah, this is the Eva Cardigan by Petite Knit. I wanted to do some kind of a oversized cardigan for him because he's a cardigan kind of guy. And I saw this pattern, not pattern, this photo of a cardigan on Pinterest. I'll put it here a while ago and I really liked the stripey greeny creamy vibe that was going on with that one so I took the Eva cardigan and kind of like modified it to look like that so this is how it's looking right now there's quite a bit of yarn management going so it's been also kind of frustrating in that sense despite it being just stock net but this is how she's looking it's got most of the body and I'm most way through one of the sleeves. And as you can see, it's got like this white top with this alternating green, gray, dark brown color with this cream. I've been, I'm having a lot of fun with it despite it taking so long. The end is near, I feel like, because once this sleeve is done and the other sleeve is done, it's just a matter of the body and the finishing like button band. Still quite a bit of work actually, now that I'm talking about it out loud, but I had him try it on a couple days ago and it fit pretty nicely now. I don't actually know how this is gonna grow because I didn't block it, or sorry, I didn't make a swatch, which I'm usually like pretty good. I like updating my swatch board. I like, I'm not really like an adventurous knitter in that aspect, but for this one, I just, I felt chaotic, you know? And I just, I just casted it on and was hoping for the best. I'm hoping for a very oversized kind of vibe. So I'm not too worried if it grows, but at the same time, because I didn't block it, I don't know how much it will grow. So it'll be a surprise at the end for all of us. Uh, but before I delve into it, this is made in Sandis Garns Sunday, held double in the color Into the Woods and Almond. I think both of them are a petite knit collaboration color and I just love the way it looks so much. It's like brown with a little bit of green undertone. You probably can't see it. I talk about it all the time. I really like it. It's got like, it's just like different. It's not so like brown brown. It's got like a warm toned yellow to it. I really, really like it, whether or not it shows up or not. And I think it goes with the almond really, really well. If you want specifics, I'm doing 10 rows of the into the woods sandwiched between two rows of the almond and I I think I'm I'm kind of in this position where I'm just gonna go in until I kind of run out of yarn I'm gonna do the sleeves first so that those are done and then I'm just gonna knit the body however long I can assuming that I have enough to do the 
button band because I want to do the button band in the almond color and I only have three skeins left. I think if I save one full skein for the button band that should be fine especially if I do the 2x2 two two ribbing that is recommended in the pattern. Part of me wants to do a double knit button band but I don't know if I have enough yarn for that. So whoa, we'll kind of have to play it by ear. If you know how to like estimate how much yarn you need for certain sections, can someone please let me know? Because right now I'm purely going based off like gut feeling and like vibes. And I feel like it's gonna get me in trouble. I feel like I'm gonna get to the very end of this cardigan and I'm gonna need like that much more. And I might buy an extra skein like later on in this month when they're having like a local yarn store day sale. But also, I don't want to just have an extra skein floating around if I like have enough, you know? I don't know. If you have any tips on that, please let me know in the comments below because it's been something in the back of my mind that is making me a little wary. Hence why I was like, let's just get the sleeves done and that will be out of the way. So then it's just a matter of like however long in the button band left. And then I also haven't decided if I want to do buttons or if I want to leave this cardigan open. I don't know if he'll button it. But I feel like the cardigan will kind of look a little incomplete without the buttons. I'm not sure either. A lot of questions going on here. A lot of, I don't know, vibes going on here. But we will see how it goes. Uh, quick shout out to my row counter. It's been a lifesaver because especially when I'm doing like the decreases, I, I really like how simple it makes it. It's like a decrease every 15 rows. So I just put my counter on and every 15 rows I do a decrease, nice and simple. And I, I won't be going back to life without row counters. Yeah. Quickly, I want to mention that this is a size small. I'm making a size small for him. The pattern does come in extra, extra small to 5XL, which is equivalent to finished bust of 106 centimeters to 156 centimeters. Recommended ease on this is 26 centimeters, so it's sh just shy of hitting the inclusive definition that I follow, which is 60 inches. I think that's like 155 centimeters after accounting for ease. If I could go back, I would try to find a different DK weight cardigan. I'm sure there's one out there that is more size inclusive than this one, but again, just wanted to let you guys know if you were interested in this, but it unfortunately doesn't come in your size. But yeah, that's the cardigan. Hopefully I'll make more progress. It's just been in the back of my mind, a couple rows here or there every once in a while. Not super prioritized. I would like to get it done before the end of the spring for him, but we'll see how the cookie crumbles for that one. I'm um, not gonna put myself to that hard deadline, but also it'd be really nice. All right, let's move on to new cast-ons. I'm surprised I haven't coughed yet. Maybe it's like a warm thing. It's really warm in here. Um, okay, next one is a new cast-on. In my last podcast episode, I was talking about a hat that I made for my grandma. I'd like to update you guys and say that it's officially made its trip across the world and my mom has given it to her. But because of that hat, which I followed the classic ribbed beanie by Pearl Soho, it got me thinking about a ribbed hat for myself. And so, that is what I'm working on here. This is the Porty hat, actually, by Yolinda Teague, which she is the designer of the Musselboro. If you guys know that hat pattern, it's like probably one of the most popular hat patterns on Ravelry. It's a really cool pattern because it's like any needle, any gauge, not any, but like between like fingering and like heavy DK, you can make any size. It's a really versatile pattern. I made so many of them. I really adore that hat but I really wanted to make a rib style hat and she has her ribbed version of the muscle bra, which is the porty hat. It's not like double layered, so you don't like make a really long tube, but it's the same concept where you can kind of decide what you want your gauge to be and then just knit it and then follow the pattern based off whatever measurements you're getting. So this is the start of it. I'm knitting it in this really beautiful like pink it's got some like speckles in it and this is I believe Earl Grey Fiber Co Ribose Singles in the color Vintage. This color is I think an exclusive colorway to Art of Yarn which is a BC yarn store that I've ordered from a couple times and I really really like the way it's working up. I am a little concerned that the increases is going to make it kind of like a pointy hat. 
Um, so I'm going to try to offset by knitting it as long as I can. And I really would like a really thick, chunky fold if I can get out of that. I still have quite a bit of the yarn, so it should be fine. I am using this fingering weight yarn held double to get this vibe. But it's just a ribbed hat. I really, really enjoyed it. It was really nice when I bought the porty hat pattern separately. You get a discount if you buy both of them. And even though I bought the Muscle Bro like months ago, I still got the discount on the porty hat. So if you guys are interested in getting this one or the Muscle Bro if you already own, just wanted to let you know that the discount worked for me. So hopefully it worked for you guys. Otherwise, if you buy the bundle together, I think you, you get like a 40% discount on each of them. Something like that. Don't quote me. But yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with this one. This one's just kind of my like quick go-to pattern if I'm going out or I need something fun and short to knit on. Um, nothing too mind-boggling. Mind I've gotten to the part where it's just ribbing in the round now. And so it's been really nice. I'm using my Knit Picks yarn or needles for this. I usually knit on bamboo needles, but just in the sake of kind of easy portability, I chucked on a couple metal ones. <coughs> Almost made it. But I had to cough. Two more test knits to talk about in my new cast on section. We'll go with one that I've been talking about in the background for quite some time. I finally cast it on. And that is the Reveries Tea by Herb Garden Knitwear. There's not much to look at right now because it's kind of in the round on some t small needles. And I haven't split for sleeves yet. But it's this beautiful kind of boxy styled silk t-shirt with eyelet detailing along the edges of the collar and the like sleeve bands and it's so nice and so fun it's got this really thick two by two ribbing on the collar and you can see the beginning of the eyelets there this is knit on i want to say 2.75 needles yeah so it's a fingering weight silk t-shirt i am using knitting for olive pure silk in the color powder which is the recommended yarn and I actually originally had this yarn for the Moonset Tea by Ozetta but I pivoted away from that because that pattern isn't size inclusive and I am instead of making this one so I'm making size 3 for her test knit it's a circular yoke which I haven't made a circular yoke garment in a while I want to say the last time I did was my Summer Souffle by Lauren Penrose, and I really, really like that pattern too. And so I really like this one, and it's been really smooth sailing because it's just, you cast on in a circle, and you just go, and you add increases, and just keep going, and it's been really smooth sailing. I was kind of worried about like the splittiness of pale silk. This is the first time I've been using pale silk, and I haven't had any issues. I'm doing this on bamboo needles, which I think was the right decision. It's the right amount of grippiness for this kind of like more silky yarn. And I'm really excited to see how this blocks out because the blocked swatch that I made is so drapey. The fabric is so beautiful. I think it's gonna be so nice to see how this grows and relaxes and yeah. A little bit about this pattern in terms of sizing. It comes in 18 different sizes. It comes in sizes 1 to 18, which matches finished bust circumferences 75.5 centimeters for the smallest to 163 centimeters for the largest. Recommended ease is 3 to 6. I think with the size 3 that I'm knitting, I'm hitting about 6 centimeters of ease. So it will be fairly boxy on me, but I think it'll be really nice for the spring summer weather. We are actually planning a trip to Asia in the fall time, which I know it's the fall, but it's like early fall, so it should still be very warm. And I'm just like envisioning how nice it will be to wear this like silk t-shirt over there in the like humid weather. Yeah, super, super excited about that. I don't have much to say about it. It's been a really, really smooth knit. Despite it being on fingering weaving, I've just had a great time you, it's mindless, it's easy to pick up and put down, and it's just struck it in the round right now. I am splitting for sleeves soon, so once that's done, it's literally just struck it until I hit the hem. <laughs> but really liking that. I also really appreciate that the test knit timeline for this one's really long. I applied for this one, I want to say in like February, maybe beginning of March, and the deadline's not until July, so I still have quite some time. But I finally casted it on. I know I've been talking about it in the past, so I just wanted to bring it up there. I've been making good progress. But I like that there's no like stress to get it done because there's still quite a way away. But 
yeah, I would definitely recommend the Knitting for Olive Pure Silk. I really enjoy it. I definitely have a couple more plans in mind for the future if I'm going to buy yarn for summer like tees and tank tops because it's such a lovely like fabric and I think the drapiness is so nice. The only thing that's been hard with it is that because it's like plant-based, it grows and it doesn't really stretch. And so when thinking about designing patterns or not designing, but like thinking about what patterns I want to make for it, you got to kind of have to keep that in mind. But yeah, definitely on my spring summer, like yarn love list now, I can't get enough of it. And I definitely, definitely want to buy more. The last project right here that I have for you guys is my newest cast on actually surprisingly or not this one is one that I applied for on a whim and I got it so by that it also is a test knit and this is the Santa cardigan by Rebecca Clow I am mid row I don't know why I would stop mid row but it's this really beautiful laced detail cardigan that Rebecca Clow is putting out I am making the smallest size for her in the short sleeve version. She is also going to be making like a long sleeve version as an option in this pattern. And I saw it and I'm not a big lace person. If you guys followed last spring, I made like a knit, a lace knit headband that I really liked making, but I didn't enjoy wearing. And I made a pair of lace socks last fall that I really liked making, but I didn't enjoy wearing. But something about this one, I think just because maybe it's like a thicker yarn, it is using I think it's worsted, maybe not. This is Cascade 220 um, and just like their pure white colors look so bright on camera. But because maybe it's like that thicker wool, I'm like less concerned about it. I don't know, but something drew me to it. The pattern is really addictive. It's got two different types of lace. So the bottom here is kind of like this like leaf detail. And then the top one here is kind of like more of like this triangle V shaped. And I've been having a blast. This is also knit bottom up. So we'll see if I have the same like s sizing figuring out problem as I did with the universal vest. But so far, so good The it's a six. No, it's an eight row like pattern repeat for both of the laces. And so you put all these stitch markers in and you just go at it. And it's super fun to get into the groove. I I've been having a blast and this yarn is beautiful to work with. It's my first time working with Cascade 220. It is so soft. It's 100% wool. It's so soft. It's relatively affordable. I think it was like $14 a skein for like a 100 gram skein. You get 200 meters and I am dreaming of like a red sweater with using this yarn. It's so luscious. I it's like not scratchy at all. It's still really soft when I blocked it that like white block there is the swatch for this pattern it like bloomed beautifully it's so soft and drapey I I like cannot say enough good things about it so if you guys want a hundred percent wool like heavier weight yarn to try or use or whatever definitely recommend I think it's like probably one of my favorites I honestly think I kind of like it better than like double Sunday. I feels it feels more wooly without being like scratchy or like itchy or like toothy. It's like so, so lovely. And it comes in a glorious amount of colors. Can't say enough. And also bonus, it's available at the like closest local yarn store to me. There's like a yarn store about 10 minutes away from me and they have the whole color selection. And I am, I just gushing and gawing. I love it. So far, like I said, it's been pretty smooth sailing. The biggest issue that I had, as well as some of the other test knitters who had, is hitting gauge. So the gauge on this one is 16 stitches per 10 centimeters by like 30 rows or something like that. And Rebecca is a very loose knitter. <laughs> I sized down, not significant. I sized, I think the recommended needle for this was four. I sized up, sorry, to a 4.5 and I hit gauge. Uh, but I know some people are having a lot of struggle and had to like size up quite a bit to get it, which is interesting because when I knit my Alder sweater, which is also by Rebecca Clow, I wasn't having the same issue. So it might be just like of a lace issue. Lace grows like a lot after you block it. Like right now, it looks really tiny. Like it's kind of strange to think that this is going to go around my body, but it honestly will grow maybe like 
half it's it like one and a half times it's like length when I block it so I think it should be fine and even if it's just like an over like throw over the shoulders or a spring dress kind of vibe I think it'd be really nice I also am not one to usually knit in white I don't know I'm not a white like t-shirt girly I'm not a white clothing person at all it's been catching my eye a little bit more recently but I don't know I just don't really I feel like it gets dirty too easily but she made her sample in white and I really really liked it so we're trying it out this first time and I've been enjoying it so far it like matches jupe she's you can't see her she's behind me but she's like bright white like that just before i quickly wrap up on this one this one comes in 10 different sizes smallest size is 79.5 centimeters in finished bust circumference and the largest is 169 recommended ease i think is zero to three centimeters i couldn't find it in the pattern but she it definitely will be written on her robbery i remember it was like zero to like something zero to like four three something around that not a lot of ease um so I am excited to see how this missed up. I hope that it's really wearable despite it being 100% wool because it's going to be like open lacy and a short sleeve, which is a style that I don't have, so that'll be fun. All right. In terms of yarn acquisition and plans, like I alluded to earlier, I don't have too much like brewing in my head right at this very moment because I have quite a few work in progresses that I'm going through. I am starting to think about local yarn store day. And if I hit my goal, even if I don't, I'm really close to my yarn stash goal, which we'll talk about in a bit. I probably will buy <laughs> quite a bit of yarn to bump that back up, but I'm really excited. So I'm definitely going to be starting to plan for yarn shopping soon. I definitely want to have some more like t-shirt tank top like projects in mind for this spring and summer months but nothing concrete as of yet a really quick update on my colette pullover i was talking about have this gorgeous blue yarn from quince and co in their chickadee base for that i actually really quickly started swatching for that not that long ago and i was having a hard time getting gauge again that one's a cable knit pullover i'll insert a photo here really really want to knit that still but now that I have so much else going on, I stopped. But yeah, I, I, I remember I was on my like fourth swatch and I still wasn't hitting gauge. And I was reading through the Ravelry comments on the page and there's like, this was like a common problem with a lot of people. I've never knit a Sari Norland project. That's not true. I knit her um, Turtle Dove shawl, which it's like, gauge is less important when it's like a little shawl versus like a garment. So. We'll have to get back into that eventually because that's still a pattern I really want to knit up. Ideally for the spring, at this rate, I don't know if I'll get to it, but I, yeah, I, I, I was on my fourth swatch and I was like, I can't. And so I just decided to do something else. But I still, the vision of that sweater in that color is like very much still in my head. So one day, whether or not it's this year, next year, sometime, I will, I will work on that eventually. But yeah, besides that, I don't think I purchased any yarn this month besides the Santa Cardigan yarn, which was the three skeins of the Cascade 220. So I've been pretty good. We will do a quick yarn update here. So for those of you who don't know, I am trying to work through my stash yarn this year. Not in the sense that it's going to be totally restrictive, it's the only yarn I'm allowed to use, but more so along the lines of just like prioritizing it. And in order to do that, my goal was to get my stash down to 100 units of yarn. And a unit was defined as like any individual like amount, so a skein or a cake, um, something that you would go to the store and you'd buy as like one thing and scrap yarn and like mini skeins didn't count in my personal definition. And so I've been working my way through the months and providing a little bit of an update in terms of how that's been going. So for March, I know we're in April, but last month um, I started the month with 115 units. Three units came in, which are the three units that I talked about for my Santa cardigan and 14 units went out. And this was actually the first month of the, since I started doing this in January where I didn't sell any yarn to bring that unit, the like out unit wise. So that was 14 units of yarn that I actually like used up in projects, which is kind of exciting. That brought down the total to 104 units at the end of March. And as of the beginning of April, I have had one unit go out. So our current total is 103 units. 
We are two weeks away from local yarn store day, which I do anticipate, like I said, buying quite a bit of yarn for that. So hopefully we will hit our 100 unit goal for that. Even if we don't, I probably will still buy something or so close, but I am really excited and happy about the progress that I've been making. The whole point of this was one, to prioritize what I was using and two, to kind of cut back on the spending. There was a period of time where I was spending maybe like $100, $200 of yarn every month, like easily. I was doing like a lot of yarn orders and I wanted to get free shipping, which is always like $200, $250. So this has kind of nipped that in the butt. Like I still get my yarn fixed in terms of like every once in a while I'll go get yarn for a test knit, but I haven't like gone out and just ordered a ton of money of yarn, which I know is changing because this month is local yarn store day and then next month we're going to Knit City Toronto, which I actually don't have plans to buy too much. I maybe want to get like one or two special skeins, but nothing like sweater quantity wise, but there is a little bit of yarn coming in the near future, which will be exciting. I, I, this is still a hobby for me. I'm having a lot of fun, and so I'm allowed. I'm o I'm okay with buying more yarn, especially at how the progress of things have been going. But that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know in the comments below what you guys are working on, how your spring knits are going. It's such a dreary day right now, but I can see the leaves on the tree in my front yard like starting to bloom. Bloom? Do leaves bloom? Grow? Open? I don't know what they're called, but. Yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying spring knitting. If you guys watched the eclipse last week, let me know. I missed it. I was going to go see Totality. We were like 40 minutes away from the path of Totality, but the sickness got to me and it made me very upset. But if any of you guys saw it and saw, like have photos, send them my way at by Emily on Instagram. I'd love to see that, but yeah. Anyways, I'm rambling. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Thank you so, so, so much for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye for now.